What's going on, guys? I'm Epileptic. Oh. 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 Is that... Is that how it's supposed to... Is that how it's supposed to go? No? Oh, it's ecliptic. Oh. Oh, I thought it was epileptic. Whoops. Huh. Well, then. I think I'll just go now. All right, in all seriousness, guys, let's get into the video. Uh, before we do that, I want to thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you guys enough. We finally hit 2,000 subscribers, and this is all because of you guys. I can't click a subscribe button myself. It's impossible. That's not how YouTube works. It's just, it's just not. It's not possible. But anyways, uh, let's go on and get uh, go on. Wow. Okay. Let's. Um, mm. I, I'm a, I'm epileptic, guys. Hold on. Uh, but anyways, let's get into the video here. Um, but basically, I wanted to talk about the Zetsuba no Shima map. Um, this map is interesting. I have a lot to say about it, and I hope you guys understand the points that I'm coming from through this map. This is a um, a rather interesting map, uh, and I want to make some valid points here before I get into the video. So basically. This map, I do not like it. I do not like this map that much, and I do not see myself posting any more content of this map anymore. And before I get into why, I want to tell you guys why I don't like the map, first of all. Um, so basically, this map, I, um, I know it's a challenging map. They made it out to be a very challenging map, and I see that. I know that, and I completely am fine with the challenging map. But there is a difference between challenging and annoying. And this map is challenging, but it is also very, very annoying to play. Um, there is so much wrong with this map right now. And let's get right on into it. Some of the stuff can be fixed. Obviously, things can be fixed. There's never an option to where something cannot be fixed. But it, it, it can be fixed. So, some of the things I'm talking about is the glitches with the map. There's so many glitches with this map. It made it unbearably hard to play the map. I was, when I went to do the Golden Bucket, the Golden Bucket Easter Egg, uh, me and Matt, or MC Sports Hawk, we were probably close to finishing the Golden Bucket Easter Egg, and then when the plant ate a spider, it actually switched the position of the plant with the spider. And for God knows what reason that actually happened. And we had to end the game because the, the round wouldn't keep going on. The round just stayed there because we couldn't kill the spider. And there's many scenarios like that that are in this map. The unkillable God Mode zombie that slides around on the ground. That is also a very big problem. I don't know how these types of bugs get through the QA testing of the ma of the game, but they do. And this is a very big issue. I want to be able to play a map that has been near perfect, perfected, I should say. Um, obviously, bugs are going to get through. That what that's what happens with every single game development. I do game developing as well, and I know that bugs do get through. There's always bugs. It's a cycle of development. But to have a map this buggy is absolutely insane. There was so many bugs with this map. Invisible spider webs that kill you. There's also exploding spiders that one-shot you and kill you through jug for no reason. Don't know how that got through. Then you have all these other bugs like... Uh, Textures not loading in. I mean, that's 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 not as big as a gameplay breaker, but it's still textures aren't loading in. That's kind of ruining the game experience and ruining the vibe of the map. Um, but you have all these glitches that aren't or shouldn't be getting through the testing of the map. Now, it it's it amazes me how. Some of the gameplay mechanics also work for this map. Now here, we're getting off the glitches topic. That We're, we're getting off of that. Uh, we're going into the gameplay of the map. For the gameplay standpoint. 
I know it's supposed to be challenging. That is definitely what the map is trying to strive for, and it's trying to look visually appealing as well. It's a very nice looking map. I will give them that. It's a very good looking map. I love the aesthetics of the map, especially the bunker in the or, or the boss fight room, not the bunker, because there's two parts to the bunker, obviously. But having the overgrowth and all this green weird stuff in a World War II type bunker is absolutely awesome. That is just an awesome environment, and I just love that. And if survival games get like an overgrowth environment down. I'm all for it because that that is just always that always appealed to me with the overgrowth of how something's not being tended to and that is always awesome I love the visual aspects to this map but the gameplay mechanics of this map Jesus I'd rather play shadows of evil because the setup to this map takes way longer than it does in shadows of evil in shadows of evil i gotta do four rituals that's it i got my pack a punch i don't need anything else if i want to i can do the sword but i don't got to but in this map you have to do the whole entire easter egg to get set up now i know you can train and i know you can go all these do all this other tactics i know that but training around this map they don't want you to do it. They pretty much just said, screw you, you can't train on this map. It's impossible. This map, everything spawns literally in front of you. The Thrashers, holy hell. They literally spawn right in front of you over and over again. I have never had a Thrasher spawn behind me before. They always spawn in front of me and block my way and I have to run somewhere else. And they it, it splits up my train because of this. Now, this map, yes, like I know... It's supposed to be challenging, but how are you supposed to separate challenging from annoying? Shangri-La. Let's bring up Shangri-La. Everyone's been comparing Zetsuba Nishima to Shangri-La. Shangri-La was the perfect balance of a map. That map was visually appealing. It was very difficult, but it was manageable, and it wasn't annoying whatsoever, and there was no damn setup time. To get to power in Shangri-La you had to open five or six doors or something like that. To get to power in Zetsuba no Shima, you have to open up the entire damn map first. That is ridiculous. That is so annoying just to turn on power. But even if you want... Even power. Power is not a problem. Power is, is like a 30-minute setup itself. That's like a 30-minute setup. And in Shangri-La, that's also like a 20, 30 minute setup because, I mean, it's a difficult map. You want to be careful when you're getting the power. Shangri-La, it doesn't take long to get power on, but it doesn't take long to get your perks either. Now, the reason I say this is because you have to open up literally every door on Zetsuba no Shima in order to do and get your setup properly. If you want to get a proper game setup of Zetsuba no Shima and start doing high rounds, you're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to do that at all because you have to spend all of your points on every single door in order to start getting your perks, which then gets you to round either eight or nine, and then you finally start getting jug. That is ridiculous to me. I shouldn't have to get to round eight or nine before I get the jug. Actually, no, no, no. Let me let me retract that statement. I shouldn't have to get to round eight or nine with zero points. Now, Shangri-La was the same way. You couldn't get jug until like round eight or nine. And let's look at it this way. I didn't have to do a bunch of side quests in Shangri-La. Once power's on, the setup is going. I get my baby gun out of the box. I get whatever wall weapon I want to use. And I start training inside the uh, slide room. I start training there. Then you have the Zetsuba no Shima. You have it basically... What it's doing is... It's elongating the process. Once you get all your perks in Zetsuba no Shima... Well, guess what? If you want the only good camping spot in Zetsuma Nishima, you have to go through an entire Easter egg, or else your life is going to be a living goddamn hell on Zetsuma Nishima. Because, guess what? 
we got a bunch of glitches to kill you, and not only that, we have seven thrashers on your ass. And the fact that you can have so many thrashers at once in one round is absolute ludicrousy. I had six thrashers going off on one round. That is not acceptable whatsoever. I'm sorry. But if you're going to implement a boss zombie and make it so damn strong that it can put you to red screen within its first hit, there's something wrong there. I I mean, I get it. They're making it challenging, like I said. But it's not a fun challenging. It's an annoying challenging. If if there's two or three thrashers per round, I get it. That is that is completely fine. They're easy to kill, but they do a lot of damage. They're a glass cannon, essentially, in MMO terms. Uh, but even so, in zombies, it doesn't really fit if you have seven of these guys chasing you down. Not only that, when you go down, they'll eat your body and then teleport you to your nearest teammate. Now, that, that can be good and bad. Now, the reason I don't like this mechanic is most of the time when you're going with high rounds with a friend and you get into, like, round 50, you're not killing that thrasher by the time your your friend is dead. Your friend is completely dead if a thrasher eats your friend on round 50 against a thrasher. That thrasher has so much goddamn health. You have better luck... You have better luck surviving the round yourself instead of killing that thrasher and picking up your teammate because that is not going to happen. The thrashers have so much health at higher rounds and it's just very frustrating that thrashers pick me up and eat me. Like I said, it's challenging and there's some aspects to it that are good because sometimes at the low rounds, thrashers will eat you when you're across the map from your teammate and then teleport straight to your teammate and then they kill the thrasher. That is awesome. But at the same time, once you go to the higher rounds, it's impossible to revive your teammate at that point because the Thrasher has just way too much health. Um, the Thrashers, like I said, having six or seven of, them, seven of them at the same time is a little too much. It's too much. I, I can understand having two or three per round, but at once, six or seven is ridiculous. There should definitely be a limit to how much you can have per round because there's definitely... When I kill one Thrasher, when I kill one Thrasher and get rid of his spores, it, it'll change my entire horde into Thrashers. That is not okay with me. I'm sorry, but I don't want that many Thrashers at once. At Per round, like I said, I'm fine with. If there's, if there's two or three Thrashers per round, I'm fine with. But two or three Thrashers at once is a different story. Then I have to constantly be on guard. Because if I get hit by that Thrasher once and get hit by a Spider, I'm dead. I'm down. Because I'm red screen and I get hit again, I'm down. That is not what I find as enjoyable. Um, but like I said, if you want the only good camping spot in Zetsuba no Shima, you're going to have to do the entire Easter egg over and over and over again. And like I said... I get it. They're making it challenging. They don't want you to train as much on this map as you did on the other ones or to Eisendrock. And I understand that. But there always has to be at least one train spot. And there is a train spot on this map. But it's definitely difficult to train in. And I like to challenge myself sometimes. I love doing challenges. They're fun. They test my skill and knowledge as a player. And to be able to test my skill and knowledge as a player while I'm doing this train spot... It's fun. I like that. It's awesome. But the setup to the entire map is just ridiculous. I have to get the zombie shield, the machine parts, the gas mask, the upgraded wonder weapon if I want to kill a horde of zombies really fast. I have to do all of these quests plus power, which then takes about an hour or an hour and a half. And if I want to go camp downstairs in the boss fight area... I have to do the entire Easter egg, and that takes about two hours, and Jesus, it's a two-hour setup just to get one good camp spot in your game, and who's to say that your damn game doesn't glitch out when you're on round 50? I've heard so many stories, and even myself, I've gotten to round 50, and so many other people have gotten to round 50, and then they get a god mode zombie glitch. Like, that is just not fun at all. I don't know how that gets through. I don't even know how that even happens. How a zombie just lays there dead while in god mode and doesn't let you move on with the game. Um, 
Personally, I thought that if a zombie was living too long and wasn't dying, it should die out. Um, that mechanic saved Black Ops 2, but also hurt it. They made it too fast of a timer. I don't know why they didn't keep it in Black Ops 3. They made it so when the zombie dies out, it just respawns and then keeps coming. But I don't know what happens in the code there because I think it it, does, it sees as a zombie dead and they can't revive it because it's already dead. So I think that's just a glitch that can't be fixed. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video or this little rant, I should say. But I hope you guys understand and maybe you'll look into buying Zetsubo Noshimi yourself. Um, personally, I say just let the glitches be patched in first. Uh, once the glitches are good, then the map will definitely be playable. But, um, but like I said, there's a lot of gameplay mechanics that may need some tweaking to this map. So, if you're going to buy the map for yourself, just try and look into the map. See if you really want to play it. Um, like I said, it's a visually appealing map. I freaking love the the visual appeal appealingness -ness stuff to the map. It's awesome. Um, but... I, I just don't know if it's really as worth as Der Eisendrock was. And I was never expecting this map to be as good as Der Eisendrock. Der Eisendrock was an amazing map. I think they topped it there. But I never expe I didn't have high expectations for this map. I knew it was going to be a small map, and it may have even been rushed. I don't know. I can't make that decision because I don't work at Treyarch, obviously. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and... Um, Anyways, thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers, and I will see you guys uh, next time. Peace.